Okay, my name is Kathy Flanders and I want to talk a little bit about um, managing our stored grain insects and corn because corn harvest will be coming up, up soon and there are various uh, considerations to be thinking about um, in, in terms of making sure that we can maintain the quality of our, of our stored grain and our and stored corn. I gave a webinar earlier this year, if you go to alabamacrops.com and look under the webinar series, you can look at the archive. We talk a little bit about storing wheat. The principles are pretty much the same, so I'm gonna keep this talk fairly short. Um, I just wanna add that if you're storing soybeans, um, the main thing and the most important thing with soybeans is gonna be getting that moisture content uh, done properly, keep it putting them into a clean bin and getting your moisture content down to where, where you need it to be for safe storage. So, but I'm gonna mainly focus on corn for this webinar. The main principles for managing stored, stored grain insects in any of these crops is we wanna keep the grain clean and dry, we wanna keep it cool and we wanna check it often. And these sort of three simple the C's here of um, clean and dry, cool, and checking it often uh, encompass a lot of different steps that we all put together. No one step in and of itself is sufficient to uh, for safe storage, but put it all together and you'll have a pretty good chance of getting through the year, um, uh, getting through the storage cycle without having problems from insects. The longer you store your insects, the more likely you're eventually going to have problems and down here in the southeast, as you'll sort of see the sort of things that make insects happy, is sort of what our southern um, storage environment can be if we don't take some uh, special steps um, to um, discourage the insects. So our goal is we want to minimize the number of insects that we're starting with, and we also want to make the con growing conditions unfavorable in the grain bins for these any of these remaining insects to grow because most of the insects that we're working with are growing up right there in the storage facilities with the uh, exception of uh, the maize weevil, which we can bring in. The problem is, is why we have to be so careful is because once you get a bunch of insects in throughout your big uh, your big grain bin, uh, the problem is gonna be that you're then gonna have to fumigate that bin to get rid of the insects. There's no other way, there's nothing you can just spray on top um, or to, to sort of clean that grain up or, or basic uh, remedy is going to be to have to fumigate, which can be costly and dangerous. So let's talk about the three C's we had keep it keeping it clean and dry. So why are we wanting to worry about keeping it clean? Well some of those stored grain insects and that we have can live for years as adults and they can just sort of hang out in the grain bins. And if you have a bit of soil, uh, a bit of grain left in the bin, uh, from the time you took out the previous crop and put in the next one, that's positively heaven for them because they can just be sitting there multiplying in that grain. So keeping that clean, uh, getting that, getting that everything swept out and cleaned up as soon as the previous crop is removed from storage is, is very important. Why are we worried about keeping it dry? Well, the um, reproduction of all of these different insects is uh, higher when there's a higher moisture content within the grain. And you can just sort of see the difference between different percent um, development. If you look at your percentage um, moisture um, on the bottom there, 14% uh, moisture and you leave your uh, pairs of weevils there for five months, you end up with a lot more weevils. If you uh, had 14% um, wheat as opposed to 9% wheat and it's the same for all of the different uh, uh, seeds that we would be putting in these in, in storage is that the drier it is the better it is. You don't want to get it too dry because you're running into the shrinkage issues that Dennis was talking about but uh, you want to store it at uh, as dry as you can um, and the dry, longer you plan to keep your corn in storage the drier it needs to be. As I mentioned, it's important to get your grain bins cleaned out. It's easier said than done. If you look at the corrugated floors and the holes in them and the things that they have to have for aeration purposes, it's not the easiest thing to clean that bin out, but every bit of cleaning you do is gonna pay off later on. So the most important thing you can do is just get all of that old grain out of there and not let, it, let insects be building up throughout the uh, time that that bin is empty. But clean it right out. Uh, as soon as the grain is, the previous amount of batch of grain is, is, is um, 
sent out, get it cleaned up. Keep your grain equipment cleaning handy uh, because uh, if you just sort of get in the habit of cleaning up any spills or any places where insects can develop, the cleaner the whole facility is, the uh, less problems you're going to have with insects because there's going to be less places to harbor the insects. Uh, in terms of keeping it clean, as soon as that bin is cleaned out and uh, all the old grain is taken out, swept out, uh, putting on an insecticide treatment uh, to kill any insects that are there and it's going to be an important concept. Uh, Tempo SC Ultra is generally the uh, go-to product for people, but there are a few other products that can be used to sort of spray around on the floor of the bin and up on the walls as high as you can reach and then outside spraying around the outside of the grain bin. So um, empty bin treatments are a very important part of keeping that grain clean. And then also to try to keep it clean is if you're going to be storing it for uh, any length of time, so corn more than a few months, um, it's important to put a grain protectant on that corn as it's loaded into the bin. This is an insecticide that is a sort of admixed into the, into the crop as it's loaded in, into the bin. So at the moment, um, this, the choices that we have for corn, and this is the type of up here, grain protectants for corn, it should say, and um, those grain protectants are uh, that we have several that are available, um, Actelic, um, Sensat, uh, there's a tank mix of uh, two different ones, Sentinel and Diacon 2, um, another one, Diacon IGR Plus. So um, we have some choices on what we use to sort of protect those grains. Uh, some data from Michael Tays at the University of Georgia shows that uh, the uh, best treatments are going to be your Actelic or your, your Sensat. If you look at those, um, these are the ones that, that first off, if you store, look at this um, over from putting it in in October and taking it out in the last sample in, in, in August, that uh, you, the most insects are in your untreated bin, um, but your Actelic down here and your Sensat, which is what we call execute at the time this test was done, have the fewer number of insects overall. Um, these other ones, the, the treatments of Sentinel alone, or their Sentinel with the insect growth regulator product, um, will give you sort of intermediate numbers. And um, top dress is just not something that's very effective at all. And um, we really don't recommend those. So one thing to be worried about and to think about for uh, using Sensat, uh, the active ingredient spinosad, is that um, on the label it says that the tolerances and residue limits for the Sensat may not be established in all counties, in all countries. And so using, use it only on commodities that are intended to, for use in the United States or that's going to be exported to countries that will accept grain treated with Sensat, which is most of countries, but that's just something to think about. Uh, one more thing, we were talking about grain drying and how important that is to put your grain in at the right moisture. If you dry your grain, it's going to be hot. And so hot grain and grain protectants don't mix because if, um, the pr grain protectant insecticide will break down if the grain is too hot. So if there's no way of cooling that grain to say down below about 80 degrees or 85 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, then it's going to be better not to use that grain protectant because it will just be broken down by the heat of the, of the, of the grain itself. So we, uh, we kept it clean and dry, and now our next problem is going to be to keep this grain cool. So we want to keep our grain temperature below 60 degrees Fahrenheit whenever possible, and we do that through the use of these aeration fans, which blow the cool air and that cooling front through the grain. And it's easier to do this with corn because by the time corn harvest is getting and taking place, we're starting to get a few cool nights, and we can take advantage of that cooler air to cool that grain down. The reason that this works is that most of these uh, insects that we have that get into our stored grain just don't develop below 60 degrees. And, and so this is just sort of showing, putting a bunch of beetles in and holding them for a few months at different temperatures, 55, 70, and 85. At the end of that storage period, uh, the only insects that we had, they were still alive with the original insects we put in, but they hadn't 
done any reproducing and, and you can kind of see that that 85 degrees was a really nice temperature for them to develop. Um, 70 degrees if they have fewer developing than at 85, but get it below 60 degrees and that's one of the best pest management tools we have. We have on our website at alabamacrops.com and clicking on stored grain a lot of information on how to store uh, store grain and we have a actually a manual sort of gives some aeration guidelines for the southeast. Automated aeration controllers that can be installed retrofitted on some of the older bins uh, can be used to make it easier to aerate. You set them for the temperatures you want the fans to come on and off on. And a lot of the new bins that are being put up actually have thermocouple cables inside the bins and they are connected to um, computers and so that you can access your what's happening, the storage conditions within your bins and have the fans automatically turn themselves on and off. Um, so that's sort of one of the things that it, that it's um, more a good idea if you're building bins to go ahead and put in your um, automated uh, monitoring systems. So we've kept it clean and dry. We've um, kept it cool. And our last option is we want to make sure that we're checking our grain as frequently as possible. Uh, one of the ways to do that is uh, with the uh, big brass grain probes that you have to sort of stick down into the grain bin, uh, the grain and pull out and see if there are insects present. Another way is to use these little pitfall traps, these little plastic things that you stick down, put down vertically into the grain and leave them for a few days and come back and then the insects that had been in that bin would be wandering around and crawl through the little holes, go clunk down through in the little pitfall and you can find out who's, who's crawling around in your bin. Uh, this is just sort of an example to show that it's a matter of time as insects grow up because it takes about a month for a generation to occur in warm weather of these different stored grain insects. This particular insect, uh, this particular grain bin was sampled once a month and we did okay for a while. We started to build up our insects in July and uh, by uh, mid-September there was we were in big trouble. So um, the longer you're going to be storing your grain, the greater the chances there's going to be problems with your insects. But monitoring them, keeping track of what's out there uh, as you can. You, can. you can't keep track of what's on the bottom of the bin, but you can at the top by using some of these traps or, or grain probes or something. A caveat that a grain bin is a dangerous place to be. We got to worry about dust that can be building up. We got to worry about just working from heights and wearing safety harnesses. Uh, making sure people know that you're in the bin when, when, when you're going in the bin. Uh, but it is important, if at all possible, to take samples of that grain and, and keep an eye on what's happening. If all else fails, we have the remedy of using an, uh, uh, an, a chemical called aluminum phosphide, which breaks down into phosphine gas, which can kill the insects when it builds up to a high enough concentration. It's important to be aware of the properties of aluminum phosphide that are going to affect safety and efficacy. It's important to read the um, applicator's manual and to make a fumigation management file, uh, plan and keep that on file when you're fumigating. So it's important. There's a lot of steps that are involved with fumigating. It's important to get the bin sealed up properly. Um, the applicant, the, the um, inactive form uh, applied properly and then the bin kept sealed up for a long enough period of time so that the fumigation uh, occurs. So uh, well, there's a lot of information about all these different topics. If you go to alabamacrops.com and uh, click on stored greens and it will take you to a lot of information about um, storing greens. And if anybody happens to be listening to this in the next week, we are having a series of stored grain workshops next week. Um, and uh, we'd encourage people uh, that are more interested in, in, in learning how to store grain to attend one of those workshops.